Okay, and hello, my name is Martin, and today what we're going to be doing is opening the Unreal Engine for the first time and setting up our game area, which is going to double as our portfolio area, since uh, the game classes at HCC are a workforce training course. Um, so I've got both 4.24 up here and 4.23, so let's open up 4.23 since that's what the majority of y'all in class have, and the uh, 4.24 looks a little bit different. So as it opens up, you'll get this screen, you'll see it initialize, uh, the, fa the more RAM or the faster your computer is, the faster this process will go by. Okay, so once you open up, uh, normally the projects will be blank. If this is your first time opening it, you'll see that I do have a couple of projects that are already in here. And then we also have the new projects panel. So if you are returning to a project that uh, you have started before, you can just click here and open it uh, without having to create a new project each time obviously. Uh, from there, the new project you'll see up here in the blueprints panel that you have the ability of being able to use blueprints. And then if you're more comfortable with the C++, but we're not going to be using that side of this software, we're going to be using the blueprint side of the software for now. The C++ is more advanced than what we want to do with this class. Um, so we do have a blank project. We also have a first person, a flying. So you can see the different types of, and what this is going to do is set up certain things for you that are uh, relevant to this type of uh, uh, this type of uh, game. Uh, for us, what we're going to be focusing on is the first person, and maybe at some point, if we uh, if some of y'all feel a little brave, we can go into the third person because that, that looks cool. You get to see your characters and whatnot. So for us, we're going to start with the first person shooter. So go ahead and click on first person. You'll see that there, and you'll get a short description of uh, what kind of stuff is going on there. Uh, from there, we have three options down here at the bottom. We can make this as a uh, desktop console game. So if you were going to sell this to one of the major manufacturers or whether you were going to make this as a PC or a Mac game. From there you also have a tablet and mobile or the mobile uh, environment so those two are different. For us since we're going to be using our computers we're going to stick with desktop and console. From there we have max quality and scalable 3D to 2D. We want to see everything so let's go ahead and leave it in max quality and then from there we have with the starter content or without the starter content. So if you were starting a, a game and you knew that you weren't going to use anything that was in the starter content because other people were providing it for you or you had other packs that you knew that you were going to import then go ahead and do that but for us we are going to leave the starter content there are a few things in there that uh, we are going to need so let's leave the starter content all right from there the last part of this screen is asking you where you want to save the project so i'm going to click and i'm going to create a folder uh, this could be on your external hard drive this could be uh, on your desktop remember that if you're working from the desktops at school you'll need to transfer your project off of the desktop because they will be erased once you log out. So um, make sure that you do have a copy that is with you at all times that you can that, that you know that you have. Um, okay, so for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to documents and inside documents. I will set up a class folder. Um, so this is going to be spring. 20, whoops, too many twos, 2020, game 1306. All right, so that's the folder that I wanted to go into. So I'm going to select the folder, and then I'm going to hit select folder, and you'll see that that has now changed the folder down there. Now, the name of the project is still my project, so we want to go ahead and change this. And what I would like to see is your first name, last initial, and then um, the fact that this is project one. And remember that uh, with this, you can't use any special characters. So if I do something like that, I'm going to get a warning message down there in the bottom left hand side that says, hey, this is not kosher. You don't want to use that. The other thing you also can't do is leave spaces. So if you do want to separate words, if I'm not mistaken, you can still use the underscore. And if we do it that way, then we shouldn't have an issue with this. So now that we have that there, let's go ahead and hit. Uh, and actually, it, you could say project one, but we could say let's call this class projects because we're going to be building off the same one and we're not going to make separate. So let's go Martin Hansen or your first name, last initial class projects. 
and I've made it too long. Okay, so anytime you see that down there, read it, and uh, here I'll show you what it looked like again. So it said project names must be no uh, cannot be longer than 20 characters in length. So I went over 20 characters. So this is just just good enough. So uh, get it to fit whatever you have to. Some people's names are longer, obviously. So just make sure the most important thing is that I see your first name and your last name, and that I understand that these are the class projects. However, you want to abbreviate that. All right, so we're going to then cl uh, click on create project. And we'll see the opening screen. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you are in. Um, and actually, let's do that. Because that is actually how it looks like when you are in. Okay, so what you've got here is the modes panel, which is going to be over here. For the most part, we're going to be in this first one called places. We will start looking at some of the other things later. Um, but for right now, we're going to be focusing with basics, lights, some of the cinemat, not yet. Uh, visual effects, maybe later. Geometries, yes. Volumes, yes. And the all classes is just everything that was subdivided here all together. Uh, from there, you do have uh, buttons and panels across the top. We will be using the save button. Uh, we will be using, if you wanted to get to the marketplace, you can get to it through there. Settings eventually we'll use. Blueprints we'll be using a lot. Cinematics we'll be using at some point. The build, yes, we'll be building a lot. Uh, play is to be able to get into the level. So if I push play, you see that I actually jump into the level and I can play. To exit the level, you can hit the escape key on your keyboard and that will then take you back out of the level so that you can be in the editing mode. And from there, launch, don't worry about that. And we're probably not going to be doing a lot with that uh, in this class. Okay, from there, you have the world outliner, which is over here on the right hand side. The world outliner um, shows you all the assets that you have that are inside of the, uh, the game area that you're working in. Try to keep this area clean. We will be talking about how to build folders and how to keep like things together. So then that way, if you needed to uh, remove a whole bunch of things at one time, you could do it here from the world outliner which again is everything that is inside the level uh, from there underneath it is the details panel so as soon as you click on something in the screen you'll see that it gets outlined you will also see the three uh, the what I call the XYZ axis tri tool and uh, from there you'll see that we get information in the details panel so the world outliner again is everything that is in the level and the details panel is everything about the thing that you have just clicked once you've clicked on it you'll see that it goes directly to the world outliner and shows you what the name of that object is but that also in the details panel you get all the information about what that is and what you can do with that particular object or asset okay um from there we have the bottom of the screen which is the content browser so this is where you're going to be able to get uh obviously two sometimes two things that you need to get to that are on the screen uh, but more than likely uh, this is where like we'll be able to go into our starter content if we needed to get something like uh, let's go into props and let's grab a chair and throw it out there right so if we zoom in we'll see that we have a chair now that we've placed on the floor okay so once you have an object and if you wanted to start manipulating that object let's go ahead and do that um, so again, we have the X, Y, and Z axes. So if I have an object and I grab just the X axis, it's going to move it in that direction. So right now I'm clicking and dragging away, which is moving it further away. I'm clicking and dragging it closer to me, which is moving it closer. From there, you have the X, uh, the Y axis. So this allows me to be able to adjust the object however I want in the environment. I can also lift the object up off the ground. And if I wanted to very gently lay the object back on the surface without uh, having it go through the surface, I can hit the end, E-N-D key on your keyboard, and that will put it very nicely on the surface uh, of whatever surface it is. Um, so from there, the other thing that you can also use with this tool, you'll notice that there is sort of like this inside box that is there. So if I grab uh, one of those, like this one right here, I am now able to move it in two dimensions as opposed to only being able to move it in one. Here I'm trying to move it to the left and you'll see that it's not moving to the left, but if I grab it there in the middle, I can grab and grab the object and move it in two directions. I can also do that this way. 
So I'm trying to move it closer to me. I can't, but I can move it up or down, left and right. And if I was to do these two, I'd be able to move it closer up and down, but I can't move it to the left or to the right. Now there is a ball that is in the middle. If I grab the ball in the middle, I can actually move it in all three directions. So I'm free to move it uh, forward, backwards. Uh, let's see, let's get the ball highlighted there. And then, you know, left, right, forwards, backwards, up, down. Okay, so again, I'm going to hit the end key and move that and leave it on the floor. Now, from there, you also, uh, that the, the tool that we've been using is the, the, the W tool, which is up here across the top. So the, uh, the first one was movement. If I go to the next one, I actually get rotation. So I can rotate the object in whatever direction I want. Let's, so you can see I can move it uh, left or right. I can move it forwards or backwards so I can create a, like a rocking chair I guess if I did the animation later I can make that look like a rocking chair um, and then I can move it this way so I if it was a swivel chair we'd be able to move it in that direction um, okay so let's set this back to where it was and let's have it facing us and it feels like it's just a little bit off now the other thing also that's happening is that as I move this uh, you'll notice up here at the top that I have uh, something that when I hover over it it says enable or disable snapping uh, objects to a uh, rotation grid and right now that grid is set to five percent so every time I move the chair it's moving at a ten percent variable right so if I wanted to have finer movements I would click this go there hit the five and there I'm moving it at five degrees as opposed to what we were moving at it before so that looks pretty close let's hit end and that feels right let's see okay if I push play let's go look at my chair yeah it looks like I got it back looks straight Okay. All right, so that's that movement. Now, from there, if I hit the space bar again, I get what looks like the first tool, but with these little uh, these little squares. So if I grab the square, what I'm actually doing is I'm stretching the object, and I just hit Control Z to undo my action. So if I again, if I do it this way, I get a really fat chair. But notice that in doing this, you're also stretching it because you're using scale. You're not actually using uh, the size, if we were to use, and some, depending on the object, sometimes you will get the ability to uh, get into uh, the X, Y, Z, but not in scale, and I'll show you that later. Uh, so same thing, I can make it a very tall chair. Now again, if I grab it from in the middle, and I evenly pull it out, now I have one of those uh, oversized chairs that you see sometimes when you go to... Uh, some of those places where you sit in them and you look really small. So if you wanted to create the appearance that you were a toddler or that you had been shrunk, you could oversize the chairs and uh, and make it look like you're a, a small person. Let's do that even more. Let's grab this. Let's make the chair look that big. And now we are a very, very small person. Okay. Very cool stuff. So the stretching will distort in one direction, the other direction, but if you do an even pull, uh, the objects should uh, should pull out without any distortions. All right. So that gives us both the ability to do the the, the three major things. So this would be location, X, Y, and Z. Also. Uh, as you're going through this, you'll see over here on the left-hand side in details that I have both location, rotation, and scale. So those three, uh, those three things there were what we were flipping through when we were hitting the space bar. It is also up here across the top. So I can come here and go to each one of those tools, and each one of those tools has a shortcut. So if I was uh, in one of the other tools and I hit W, you'll notice that it goes into that tool. Or if I hit E, it'll then go into that tool. And if I hit R on the keyboard, it'll go to the other. For me, it's just easier to use the space bar and rotate through the different tools that I need um, uh, and, and or come up here to the top and do it. And uh, as well as if you needed to do finite movements, um, we could go over here to location and I can click and drag the object left and right, forwards and back, up and down. Okay, 
I could also do the same thing with the rotation here. So let's undo, undo. And let's set that all back to zero. Oh, also what I did just there was um, every time you make a change in any one of these, you'll see that you get this kind of like little yellow thing that, uh, that says reset to default. So if you wanted to, you could always reset whatever the original location for that was. Uh, this was a smaller object when we did that, so it didn't go exactly where I wanted it to. Let's see right there. And if we needed to, we could again come here and reset the size. So now it's the same size chair that we had before. Uh, is it sunken into the ground? It does look like it's sunk into the ground. All right. There we go. So now we look pretty tall. Or, you know, I guess average size. That looks like a small chair. Um, anyway, so that gives you the ability to be able to grab things, bring them in, and using those three tools, be able to move the object around. Um, so then that way uh, you can start setting things in the environment that you want.